All right, everyone, we're going to get started here. Uh, again, thanks a lot for joining us here today. Um, you know, as you know, we're going to be uh, diving into kind of traveling with pets uh, and can we under, you know, understanding what people care about when they travel with their pets. A short little uh, agenda here. Um, just going to introduce myself, uh, who I am, what I do here at Quid. Uh, go into a short, about 10 minute or so presentation um, about what QUID is uh, and kind of how our agency clients use QUID. Uh, you know, dive into then the demonstration, which will be, you know, most of today, about a half hour within the QUID platform ex uh, itself, you know, identifying and understanding again, you know, what people care about when traveling with their pets. And then we will have some time left over at the end for uh, a, a brief Q&A. Uh, so as we are going through the demonstration um, and, and understanding what QUID is and, and how we use it, please uh, throw your questions into the question and answer channel as they come in. Uh, we will then sift through uh, the channel at the end and answer as many questions, if not all the questions, uh, if time allows. So, uh, without further ado, my name is Oliver Bloom. I sit here on the business development team at Quid, again, um, in our agency uh, vertical, kind of helping Quid, uh, helping our agency clients uh, demonstrate value to their clients, understanding how they can use the platform, really what kind of insights can be discovered um, and how to discover them. Um, and then, you know, ultimately helping drive more success for their clients and the brands that they represent. Just so everyone is aware, um, if you're not, uh, if you're not aware of the recent news, Quid and NetBase uh, have merged over the past week, um, and you know we have a, a kind of a single goal in mind, which is help our clients make smarter, faster, data-driven decisions. Uh, I think you know what's more relevant here for everyone on the line is probably going to be that consumer intelligence, but we combine consumer and market intelligence to really give our clients and our customers, uh, you know, a, a holistic understanding of, you know, any sort of topic um, or industry uh, or conversation really that they want to dive into. Um, so just that's at a high level. That is some really exciting news here um, over the past week that we would like to share with you. But, you know, for today, we're going to be focusing on Quid, um, what Quid can do, um, the platform that, that, you know, some of you might be familiar with. So at a super high level, Quid was developed to inspire this idea of full picture thinking. What our algorithms have been built to do uh, is to draw connections amount, uh, across massive amounts of written content. Now, what that means is our, our NLP algorithms identify and categorize um, each piece of data that runs through our platform and identifies similarity in language. Um, that helps our clients see, you know, what different niche conversations are happening or, or are being talked about um, within a given topic, within a given industry. Um, and so they can really quickly identify, you know, some, some interesting insights to bring in their clients while also understanding the entire um, narrative around a certain topic. We help our agencies, you know, gain insight by surfing narratives tied to their to client's brand, um, you know, a certain industry, whether they're competitive, their competitors, um, and, and, you know, these things are very hard to spot with a naked eye. And when you're reading through, you know, tens and twenties of documents, um, so Quid actually does that for you. We signal trends, opportunities, you know, whether there's like a potential risk or warning or trouble ahead. Uh, just to quickly kind of show, um, this, this kind of gives a picture of, of what Quid does. If I were to search a certain topic over on the left, I would get something like a few million results in this case, um, you know, 43 million results um, for a certain topic I'm identifying. There's no human um, in the history of the world that can read through 43 million documents and, um, you know, identify certain insights as interesting and, and relevant. So what we do is actually 
you know, run those documents through our algorithm, which then spits out um, over to the right, uh, you know, a, a network map that shows the relationship between documents. He, uh, Quid gives them um, these clusters or these little niche areas of, of conversation, a human friendly name so we can easily start to identify really what narratives are happening around this topic. Uh, we'll dive more into that into the platform and I'll really show you guys how to, uh, you know, how to use that and how to read that. But for now, um, you know, may have questions about where that data comes from. What's relevant for probably most of you on the line here is our news and blogs data set. Uh, we have 550 global media blog outlets. We update an index from LexisNexis uh, about every 10 minutes. Um, we have historic data uh, that dates back to 2013 uh, with over a billion uh, articles that we've stored. So really can, can help you identify trends over time, not only, you know, what's going on right now, but how conversations and narratives have shifted. We also have our companies and our patents data set uh, that we pull in from Capital IQ and Crunchbase and over 50 jurisdictions. Uh, but again, I think the news and blog is really relevant toward, towards most of you on the line today here. Now, Quid, uh, you know, these data sets can't answer every single question and quid was built with that in mind. So we actually allow our clients and our users to upload any sort of written content into quid that can then be identified, um, analyzed and used to, you know, uncover insights. The uh, logos here at the bottom are some of our most used, uh, you know, pieces of where the data comes from, but really we can analyze anything as long as it's in a CSV file uh, and um, it's written. So just want to touch on kind of our, our top agency use cases, what folks on, on the line here like yourself might use Quid for um, in an everyday workflow. Media relations is, you know, identifying relevant journalists, how how to impact your client and how that impact is positioned in the media. Crisis preparation is kind of anticipate and prepare for certain events that might, that might pose potential risk. Um, a great use case for quit is understanding where narratives and sources resonate with audiences and kind of developing content around that. We identify key opinion leaders and influencers that help drive, um, you know, different narratives among different audiences. Uh, competitive intelligence is a wonderful use case around quit as well. Track competitors, media footprints, you know, things that are relative to your brand. Um, and then again, just touching on kind of understanding industries um, and narratives, uh, the landscape kind of as a whole. So, you know, we're going to dive in today uh, to understanding pet travel, um, traveling with pets, what consumers care about, kind of pain points, um, see how the, the conversation has changed over time. Uh, just want to touch on before, we pulled uh, a number of different data points from a few different data sources that we typically like to use that understand, um, you know, that are talking to forums, um, pulling posts from Reddit, uh, Quora, and a few other travel data sources. Um, so I am going to just stop sharing my screen for two seconds here. Um, and I will dive in to the Quid platform. All right, you should be able to see my screen here, um, which will look somewhat familiar uh, as one of the slides that I had showed in the deck. But this is uh, a typical network map that uh, is kind of our, our opening intro. It's more or less our logo. You'll see it all over our website. But this is Quid's original interpretation of the data that it runs through its algorithms. Each dot, or what we refer to in Quid uh, as nodes, represents a piece of data. In this case, uh, a review that we pulled from one of our forums. 
what quid allows you to do is obviously like i said take a full holistic picture of conversations that are happening around a certain topic but we allow you to get really really granular into the data that you're actually analyzing so you can go in zoom in here and actually click on one of these posts uh, you can actually you know you can go in and see the post itself i'm over to the right here you can read the entire uh, post you can see keywords that are associated with uh, you know with that post itself you can see who wrote it where it's coming from how many times they've posted it um, and a number of different uh, you know metadata associated with that post itself you can see the forum name that uh, it came from this was um, you know from uh, one of the travel sources that that we had identified so you can go in and see you know what that actual post is saying uh, you can also understand then you know which co which conversation that relates to in this in this case that post that i had clicked on um, falls under kind of like the rules and regulations theme that quid has identified if you're interested in seeing how a certain piece of data relates to not only uh, the data that it's connected to, but actually the network as a whole, we can now go in and select the neighbors. So this is what we would actually call a bridging node. If you can see here, it relates to this green cluster or this green theme that's traveling with pets. And then we can also see that it's also related to our blue theme our rules and regulations. So this node would actually then represent kind of two parts of the conversation that's happening within traveling with pets. So that's kind of how you would go in um, and, and kind of see how the data relates to one another. What Quid has done here uh, is, is it's identified, like I mentioned, four large overall themes that relate to the travel industry and traveling with pets. Our largest theme is rules and regulations. Our second largest theme is searching for pet friendly places. Traveling with pets, the actual act of traveling, um, you know, the actual experience itself. And then, you know, types of animals that are actually being talked about um, when traveling with pets. We're going to focus on pet friendly places for the next few minutes, um, as that was kind of an interesting topic that we've identified, but we can We can go over to our control panel on the left here and see the actual clusters that make up the conversation. So now this gets a little bit more granular and we can see that pet friendly hotels pet friendly accommodations cat carriers actually importing your animals and going through customs. These are all the, the smaller conversations that are now, you know, uh, making up those, those identifiable themes. So I'm going to flip back here to the, uh, the, the overall themes and go in and focus on uh, solely pet friendly places. So a lot of our clients um, and the customizability of the functions here is you want to be able to focus on and kind of eliminate noise on uh, you know topics and conversations that you don't necessarily care about so we've created a function which is just shift f to actually eliminate all that noise and focus solely on that pet friendly conversation itself now i'm going to break it down again into our clusters theme um, to see okay what you know what are these conversations that are being had that make up that theme searching for pet friendly accommodations, pet friendly hotels, looking for places to eat with my dog so I can actually take my dog in and not having to leave it at the hotel or the Airbnb or you know whatever you know my accommodations are. Uh, rest areas and looking for you know places that I can exercise my dog. Uh, dog parks and dog beaches, which is kind of a fun little theme here. Um, and then you know dog dog friendly accommodations as well. So we can see the breakdown and the makeup of this theme. Uh, dog friendly accommodations. So it looks like people are mainly travel or not mainly, but uh, a large portion of people are uh, you know traveling with their dogs and looking for dog friendly accommodations. 
that, you know, that is supported again by our dog parks and dog beaches, looking for parks and beaches to take your dog. Uh, overall pet friendly accommodations, hotels also makes up that, that conversation as well. Uh, but let's, let's dive in here. We can now pivot our data that we're focusing on um, to, to uncover a number of different insights that this theme can show us. Uh, so we have a question from John, um, which is actually a good question. So this is uploaded data and John asked, uh, does Quid automatically name these clusters uh, or, or were these named by, by the user itself? So kind of a two part answer. Um, in our news and blogs data set, Quid will automatically get, give um, these clusters a human friendly name. Um, those can go, those can be edited um, to more correctly identify and, and, and kind of show what these clusters make up. Uh, and then when you're uploading data, Quid will give a list of about three or four of the most relevant and highly used keywords within that cluster, which then users go in um, and rename according to uh, uh, according to kind of, kind of how it, it best wants to be represented. So just to dive into that real quick, um, I'll click into this pet friendly accommodations. As you can see, the top keywords here are friendly, pet friendly, great place, search, right? So I'm, I'm going to understand that those were, those, were the, um, those were the keywords given and recommended by Quid. So I went in and named it pet friendly accommodations. We can probably see the difference here. Hotels, friendly, pet friendly hotels. That's why we've named pet friendly hotels and then pet friendly accommodations. These are people who are searching and writing about actual hotels rather than someone who might be talking about an Airbnb or campsites um, or something in that nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so gonna go in and flip to um, our bar chart where we've identified locations within the pet friendly themes. So within that conversation, these are the locations, the countries and cities that are being mentioned the most within each of these posts themselves. As you can see, France, the United Kingdom, Thailand, Italy, um, those are really leading the conversation um, and then smaller, you know, Denver, California, Switzerland at the bottom here uh, really represents the most talked about locations um, within this network or within this sub theme of the network. Uh, what's really interesting here and what we can do, um, one of my favorite, uh, you know, customizations within these quid bar charts is we can stack the bars and then turn on some labels to show the percentage of the conversation that is actually being talked about against, you know, whatever our bar chart is being um, represented here. So in this case, right, the, the locations that are being mentioned, something really interesting to call out is that within Thailand, actually more than half of the conversation is talking about dog parks and dog beaches. You know, what, what does that mean exactly for someone like you? If you have a travel brand or you represent um, a tourism board, um, a marketing destination organization uh, that has to you know, do with Thailand, creating content on the best dog friendly beaches within Thailand, um, that's a great insight um, that can kind of drive a strategy here that we've identified. Um, something else to call out, uh, when people are in Bangkok specifically, over a third of the conversation is doing uh, is dealing with you know rest areas and where I can actually uh, exercise my dog, um, and so you know again another insight there is creating content or kind of driving the fact that Bangkok either has um, you know great rest area or exercise areas for your dog, or taking it to Bangkok and say people are searching for this, this is what they want. Uh, so I'm going to flip back to um, our network, uh, our network tags again, real quick. 
um, dive back into our pet friendly places uh, and switch to a saved view here. Um, we were just in locations. So now I actually want to understand the locations that are being talked about within that, uh, within that sub conversation, within that theme and understand, okay, how do people feel about, um, you know, what's the sentiment around each of these locations? Again, we can, uh, we can stack these bars to really understand, you know, if there's more negative, more, po uh, more negative, more positive, or kind of more neutral conversations that are happening within this space. So we can see that actually in Canada, only 29% of the conversations that were being had around uh, this, this conversation were positive. Something again, to take to a travel board to say, you know, people aren't really having good sentiment. Um, you know, we need to start, you know, we need to start messaging towards bringing your dogs um, or, you know, having uh, having a better strategy towards getting people to think positively about Canada. Uh, <clears throat> so those are a couple insights that we can derive from our bar chart. What I'm going to do now is flip into our timeline. And what we see against our timeline is validation that, you know, traveling with pets, um, taking your pet with you when you travel, uh, it is massively growing in popularity. I mean, it's, it's even more, you know, from 2018 to 2019, the conversation online around traveling with your pet, you know, more than doubled. And so that's a really good indicator to anyone that represents a travel brand that this is something that people are massively caring about. Um, and, and that is really important to them. So creating any sort of experience, um, or, or content around helping people successfully travel with their pets is, is going to have, you know, a positive impact on your brand. Now, obviously, you know, we're, we're just into 2020 here, so there's not too much data um, on 2020. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to click and drag and focus on 2014 uh, to 2019, which is kind of the meat of our data. I'm going to use that shift F function again. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and once again, stack 100% uh, stack this timeline, which is really going to help me understand how the conversation overall has shifted over time. We can see that identifying and discovering actual pet friendly places to take your animals and take your dogs uh, has actually decreased over time, starting with like around the 40% in 2014 and 2015 you know, falling to, to below 20% in 2019. And where we see the shift is actually focusing more on the rules and requirements in terms of, you know, what do I need to do? You know, are there loopholes I need to jump through? Are there things I need to consider with local uh, federal governments, you know, airlines, how to successfully travel? Um, so, so it's, it's the conversation has shifted again, something to bring to a client to say, this is, you know, this is the direction that the public is headed. Um, you know, how can we best position our brand to successfully take advantage of that opportunity? Uh, we are going to now, uh, flip into our scatter plot, um, and we are going to categorize and measure um, some actually unique quid uh, data science um, terms and, and functions. Uh, I'm going to go into a very high level here. Um, I am not a data scientist, as I mentioned earlier, but if anyone is really interested in how these are determined and, and kind of the algorithms and data science behind it, we're happy to point you in the right direction after this webinar. Um, but Diving in uh, on our Y axis, we are measuring uh, intercluster connectivity. And intercluster connectivity is basically saying how related in language each cluster is to the rest of the overall network. On our X axis, we're measuring between the centrality, which is saying how connected in language each individual piece of data 
is connected to all the other individual pieces of data within its own cluster. To better understand that and represent that, I'll show you here on the bottom left of our screen, we have rabies vaccination. That has low between the centrality and low inner, inner cluster connectivity. If I select its neighbors, we're seeing that really it's only connected in language to cat carriers and advice and pet airline advice. What this is saying is that rabies vaccination, the cluster itself, only shares language and shares commonality with those two clusters. And also its language is so interwoven and interconnected within itself that it's very, very all related to each other. On the flip side, planning a trip with pets, as you can imagine, because this is, uh, you know, a conversation around traveling with your pets, it's got pretty high between the centrality and very high inner cluster connectivity. I can show by selecting neighbors here that, again, this has a very high central um, relevance to the entire network as a whole. It touches on dog-friendly restaurants, pet-friendly hotels, service animals, cat carriers, etc. that again visualize the fact that this is a very central narrative to this overall conversation. Something to take away from this is if you're planning a campaign, if you're planning um, and strategizing, strategizing with your client, planning a trips with pets hits home on a lot of different other topics. Um, so that's, you know, a good place to start in terms of resonating with an audience. <clears throat> uh, so that kind of summarizes um, a little bit of what we're going to show today. I want to come back um, to this network tags uh, and, and really show again one, one other functionality that we have. Quid uh, entity extraction is, is um, you know, top of the line in the marketplace and something we really pride ourselves on having built very well here. Um, and so we can actually identify within these conversations that are being had online, organic brand recognition and organic brand um, awareness. So within this bar chart, uh, we can flip to um, seeing any organization that has been, uh, an organization that has been mentioned uh, any amount within the cluster. Uh, within the uh, within the conversation, excuse me. We can then dive in and say, okay, let's stack these bars, understand where the brand is being mentioned the most, where it's having the most dominant conversation or where it's actually lacking conversation. Uh, and then, and then we can, uh, excuse me, hold on. And then we can dive into Again, one of those rules and requirements, something that we've identified as a pretty high um, conversation. Understand what clusters are then making up that conversation and the, uh, and, and the you know, diversity in um, which brands are being represented in there. So Air France uh, is dominating the conversation. 67% uh, of its conversation is actually um, coming out of the pet airline advice uh, cluster. Something to take back if you represent Air France or Air France is a competitor of yours. So I wanna stop there um, and kind of check in with everyone to see kind of any questions we had around some functionality that we can answer uh, or any questions in terms of the data we've analyzed and, and looking into um, discovering something else that might be interesting to everyone. So we'll give a few minutes here um, and we're going to look at some of the questions that have come in. So a uh, question came in was what time frame um, 
was this analysis done uh, and, and where did the data come from? Um, so I'm just going to flip back to uh, our timeline here. Um, so this was data that we pulled uh, that dates all the way back to 2013. Um, we pulled this data from uh, a number of different travel forums um, and travel um, travel websites that, that do travel reviews and things like that. Um, and then we also searched um, and pulled from one of our favorite data sources in terms of understanding uh, voice of the consumer uh, in organic conversations, which is uh, Reddit. Um, so that's where that data comes from. And again, that's, that's the timeline here um, that we analyze. So another question here uh, is how could we combine this data with other data uh, mentioned in the, the introduction of today's, today's webinar? Uh, so great question. There's a number of different answers and a kind of a, a number of different things that our clients will do. Um, but creating two analyses side by side and comparing, um, you know, what conversations are being have, have in the media, um, and being have on, you know, online through trade publications, news sources, things like that, with them pulling your own data and creating side-by-side -side analysis of this is what the consumers are talking about and this is what the media is talking about, um, it is definitely one of our you know, highly used news um, use cases uh, for Quid. Really easy to do that. Um, if you'll see on my mouse is hovering around this kind of like download icon right here. You can click that and you can actually download any chart you're looking at as a PowerPoint slide um, or, or as an, a, an image. And what that, that allows you to do is really quickly and really efficiently build decks between um, either of an entire analysis you've done or take pieces of different analyses from different data sets um, and, and kind of use that to compare. So uh, another question here is, does Quid have its own databases for academic articles? Uh, great question. Um, we do not have our own data set uh, of academic articles, but we have uh, many contracts and agreements with sources that we are able to pull from, um, give you access to, and, then, and that you can then identify um, with, with your license. Uh, so another question here, from start to finish, how long did it take to create this presentation? Uh, another great question. Um, pulling the data, finding um, relevant sources to uh, export, download, and then import into Quid, that took me about um, an hour and a half um, to read through certain things that we were finding as relevant. Uh, uploading into Quid, you know, takes no more than about 60 to 90 seconds for Quid to then analyze. Renaming clusters, identifying, you know, certain views that we found as relevant and interesting took about two hours. Um, so all in all, you know, from start to finish, from identifying the topic we wanted to discover uh, and then presenting to you here today, I'd say it was about three and a half to four hours of work. Uh, and then also just to touch on that as well, um, you know, with your license, you've got, uh, you know, you've got uh, access to a customer success team and, you know, we can help turn around um, any sort of analysis, you know, within a couple hours given given kind of, you know, a, a solid use case for quid um, and kind of the right data that we want to, uh, you know, analyze to answer certain questions. All right, well, there's, uh, there's no more questions here uh, in the Q&A channel. So, you know, feel free to, you know, throw some more in. Um, I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes just in case there's any, um, you know, last minute questions or things we want analyzed here, but uh, that, that basically wraps us up here today. 
uh, want to thank you all again for joining in on the presentation. Hope you found this insightful, both in terms of the topic we explored um, and also the functionality within Quid and kind of what you can do, um, you know, to bring value to your to your clients. If you're interested in in diving more into this topic with me or, or another one of my colleagues, um, please reach out. We'll be sending this webinar, uh, a recording of this webinar over um, sometime either later today or tomorrow. So please look out for that. Again, thanks so much for joining us and um, you know, feel free to send in some more questions. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone.